Mike Massimino, former NASA astronaut and uh, current uh, Columbia University engineering professor. My name is uh, Joel Kinnaman, and I'm the fake Mike. Uh, <laughs> I'm the pretender. I'm the guy who just uh, who, who reads lines and, and pretends to know everything that Mike actually knows. Yeah, but but as long as you look cool, people think I'm cool, Joe. So that's a lot on your shoulders, man. All right, all right, I'll take it. Yeah, man. So I'll, uh, I appreciate I'll do my it. best. Mike, how do you think the space race might have played out differently if the Soviet Union made it to the moon first? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I think that the show gives a pretty good uh, a pretty good shot at what might have happened. But I tell you, I think though, as far as like the reaction of the world, uh, the Apollo astronauts who have gotten to know have said what was interesting is that after they landed on the moon, he went for these tours around the world, you know, and and that it was never that the Americans did it; it was that we did it. So if they were, no matter where they were, it was like we did this. They, it was it was such a great accomplishment. It was seen as an an accomplishment for all mankind. You know, mm -hmm. I, didn't, yep. I just threw that one in there. And so that's what I would hope would have happened. I think that's what would have happened. How everything else would have went, I don't know. I would leave it up to you know Joel and his friends to to, uh, to show us maybe what what could have happened in an alternative universe. There, we, we we landed at the moon, you know, like ten years before I was born, and we haven't gone anywhere since. And I think that a lot of people in my generation didn't really dream of being an astronaut. So this became an opportunity to really like dive into that whole world that I was fascinated with. But then also doing that in a time where now the last, you know, five, 10 years, I think is the most exciting time in space exploration since the, 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 the late 60s, early 70s. I got to tell you, though, with your show, you're not only inspiring people on the Earth, uh, but you're also inspiring people in space. We had a, uh, a, a downlink, a few of us, Garrett included, with the space station this weekend. And Kate oh, wow. Rubens is, on, is up there. There's, you know, there's seven people up there right now. And she was saying how they watch for all mankind in space while she's what? worked out. So, and I can yeah, understand yeah. why, because, you know, they're hoping maybe to go to the moon soon. A lot of these astronauts that are up there now and on the space station. And, and plus you make it look really cool. So just so you know, man. So cool because I, I think that, you know, like science and science fiction has always been interlinked. And, and, and I think humans are driven so much by, by you know, by, by stories and real stories and made up stories. And, and you know, so if in any way we can be a part of like feeding the narrative of, you know, exploring and going deeper into space, you know, like that it feels so good. I'm curious to hear from both of you, if NASA somehow called you up, if some Hollywood production company wanted to shoot on the moon, would you both be interested in going? Whew, are you kidding? Like, so I've, I've, uh, I have this, uh, you know, commitment to myself, you know, that, that I'm going to do everything I possibly can to one day in my life get to see the world from space. When I was preparing for this, it was the one thing that, that struck me more than anything. All the interviews that I was, that I was listening to and all these astronauts, and, and they, they all just said that, that that perspective of seeing this blue orb in this mm -hmm. ocean of darkness of black mm -hmm. just made every idea of you know internal squabble or, or you know tribal strife on earth so so futile and and it, and it just we are one human family and i just want that experience what about you mike what if nasa called you today and they were like mike are you ready i don't know if i'm ready there's a lot of, <laughs> you know, a lot of training that needs to be done <laughs> but yeah, I go. I dream about that all the time, Joel. I, you know, I think I, I still dream about going back to space. You got one more mission left. You got to go. And I'm old enough to remember Neil Armstrong on the moon. I was six years old. But when I was uh, graduating college, I went to see the movie The Right Stuff. Mm. And part of what it re inspired me to want to become an astronaut was the view out of John Glenn's uh, spacecraft in that movie. I saw that and I was like, I want that view. I tell you one thing, though. I tell you what, Joel, I like to go back as a tourist. So I could take it easy and, and complain about the service. But <laughs> you're working all the time. You know, you're always on edge. You know, you never know what's going to always giving you stuff to do. So of course, I like of course. I like to go again, just kick back. And I think our planet was meant to be viewed from space. We can see a lot of beautiful things. Right now at my window, it's snowing here in New York. It's beautiful. But you get above our planet and look back. I, I think that's how it was meant to be seen. When do you think that we'll be back on the moon? Well, I sure hope, uh, you know, by the end of this decade would be nice. What I feel good about is that it seemed like we were, were taking steps to do that. Joel, when I first became an astronaut in 96, the space station was being planned, right? And I was like, well, I ho sure hope it happens. 
But I remember going to the Kennedy Space Center on a tour with these with my other with my fellow astronauts, and there was stuff being built. And I went on a trip to Japan, and Japan had the Japanese module, which is now in space, was in wow. a clean room in Japan. I go, look, people are going to be disappointed if we don't because they've got this stuff. And I think as long as we get that momentum going, you know, we're building the big rocket, we're building the spacecraft, let's build more of that infrastructure, which is like we're doing. I, I think we're taking the the right steps. You mentioned about we've been there and we kind of stopped. You know, a lot of people see that, but the way I look at it is that uh, there's a difference between going on a vacation for a couple of days and relocating, right? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go on a vacation, you, know, you can go just about anywhere, jump in a plane, pack a bag, buy the underwear when you get there if you need it. It's not that big of a deal. But if you're going to stay in a place and move. But but in terms of investment, you know, like the race of the moon, it was like a crisis project, right? It, it, it was yeah. about beating the Russians. So, I mean, I think it was like 10% of the national uh, budget, you, you know, mind. went to NASA and, yeah. and, and all the innovation that that spurned. I mean, that gave us the internet, the, the GPS, you know, all, all this stuff that we were still benefiting from as a society, uh, you know, came from that investment in science yeah. and 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 I think that you know the more excitement that people have for innovation in space, and you know we are as a society are going to benefit from it. It's it's true. It's we don't we we spend the money on the ground, and we what we're really doing is improving life on Earth. The research we do, the discoveries we make, what it is, it it it, it gives us a way to affect our future and our life on Earth with the technology and with what with the knowledge in a way that is that is very unique. And I think your show is doing a lot to inspire people of all ages to understand that, look into it, what's going on in, with the space program, be inspired by your, your program and, and uh, look toward the future a bit.